We've got C. Hello, C. Are you there? Yes. Hello, C. Yes. What are your thoughts on what we're talking about right now with uh, people, you know, we're talking about prohibition, talking about the regulation, talking about wine as a culture in the United States and how it's changed over the last hundred years. What are your thoughts? Actually, I'm just on here because my mom told me to because Adam is my dad. You're punished. <laughs> so you're just hanging out. Yes. Well, all right. If you had to say one thing to em embarrass your boss, what would you say? Um, uh, there's many things, but I'm not really sure if he wants me to. Probably not. No. <laughs> Um, I, where you were talking about with, with the, the way you were brought up, I was raised Southern Baptist in Texas. I never drank till I got to college. I mean, anything, no alcohol. And once I got to college, I drank a boatload, but it really wasn't fine wine much. Um, but, and this was before my wife, so she'll forgive me for saying, but what, and I was a junior in college. I started dating a girl that was a senior and she moved out to Walnut Creek, California after college. And I, we spent some time traveling around wine country, went to Napa Valley, thought we knew something because we liked Mandavi White Zen better than Setter Home White Zen, and Folia du Muscat was a big thing and all of that. But we discovered this one place we loved to picnic, loved their red wine. It's the first red wine I ever fell in love with. Uh, it was a overlooking vines and a river, and it's gorgeous, and you're in love at the time. And it was 84 Rocchioli Pinot Noir. Wow. And that was the first red I ever fell in love with. And we make Pinot Noir to this day because in part because i fell in love with pinot and then i met my wife at some point and we introduced i mean she started drinking pinot so yeah i think a lot of it is the way you're raised the culture the the that is a problem but i also think sometimes as wineries we tend to look at the east coast and west coast and we call the rest of the country to some extent the flyover states and I think that's unfair. I think there's a, a lot of potential in the middle part of the country that we don't spend time as wineries talking to those people, presenting our wines to them. And I think that's where a lot of the growth can come in the country. John Caldwell. Yes, there we Mr. go, Caldwell. John Caldwell. How's it going? Pretty fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole lot better once we get some wine in that man's glass. <laughs> I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. And uh, actually, the the mid states are interesting. When, when I fly there, it's you, you find actually a pretty well educated uh, uh, crowd of wine drinkers. Really. And it's it's sometimes because I will say a lack of uh, other things to do, mm -hmm. but they start <laughs> collecting wine and uh, getting mm -hmm. into food and wine, and and you find those markets that you will not, you know, you'll be surprised how much people know about wine and how much wine they buy and drink. And that's it's very good for the industry. So. Missouri, depending on the year, is our second, third, or fourth best state in the country. Yeah. Really? We sell a tremendous amount of wine, but because we had a good response when we first went there, and so you keep going there, people get to know it. And if you ever fly like from Texas, where I'm from, up to say Chicago, and you fly along the Mississippi River, you see how important a mode historically that was of transportation before airlines had that. But people would come up and down, and how the cities are built along the river, and it's. Um, I, again, I just think that middle part of the country, a lot of parts of the country we have not spent the time in, and we spend time fighting each other for a placement down in L.A. Not that it's nice to have a placement, but it's there are other places that if we go out and, and sell wine, um, we can have a lot of placements and get a lot of people drinking wine that aren't drinking wine right now. We had, um, after 9-11, the East Coast shut down. I mean, it's horrible time, obviously. Boston, New York, a lot of restaurants shut down, even Florida, because a lot of people go down to Florida from Boston to New York. We had gone to Little Rock. Being from Texas, we flew up there, and we did a winemaker dinner, and it was a big deal. It's like 100 people showed up, black tie, evening gowns, because winemakers normally don't go to Little Rock. Um, well, then in November of 2011, we're not having any orders from distributors. It's really concerning to us. And I get a $17,000 order from Little Rock. And I call up the distributor. And I'm like, Lewis, you don't need $17,000. I mean, nobody's ordering anything. He's like, no, we really do. We've sold out of it. Y'all came here. You supported the market. Um, we People want the wine. Um, so, yes, I think some ways it's getting out of the mindset. I, I don't know that it's it's fair to say you don't need to go to these other places, but I think you need to incorporate a few other 
out of the normal places uh, into your market visits? Um, you know, the, the only thing that you, you like, as Juliana is saying, you know, you build up relationships in areas. And yeah, I kind of miss that because, you know, in many years, you, the people, well, then some people show up here and are going, you know, God, I haven't seen you for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you're coming back to see me, you know, wherever in the hell it is. Um, it's not, and it, and it is part of the business. And I, mean, I think probably that's probably the most important part of the business now for us and our our segment of the business is, is building those kind of relationships. Um, but I, as I said, I'm kind of happy that I don't to hit the road sure. six or seven months out of the year to, to sell my product. We, uh, in the tasting room, we get a lot of people from Arkansas now. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's surprising. Uh, Minnesota. And I don't think, I don't remember us 10, 15 years ago hitting, even thinking about states like that. And they're hungry for uh, a little TLC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there's, a, there's certainly some big markets out there that we've never tapped, particularly for us little guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, we uh, to try to be important to the distributors now. You you've got to you got to find those places where you know where Kendall Jackson. It, it we yeah. need we need we need um, and, we, we, yeah. And it's almost yeah. finding the retailer and restaurant yeah. in some ways that really wants your stuff, and then it's you push one way and they pull the other way, and you can make it happen. But it requires an, an inordinate amount of effort between everybody. Sometimes to get one placement at one place, mm -hmm. Oof. it's a lot. But you, but you, but we have to do that to build our thing, our little, us little guys. I mean, if we're going to come back important in the in the states throughout the country, uh, uh, shucks, we got to work really hard at it right now. I do think the timing though has gotten really good for okay. us again because I, I mean, I'm just thinking. Suppose you opened up a a new restaurant in Little Rock or where in the hell. And you, your distributors had Kendall Jackson, Robert Mondavi, you know, you've, you've got all the distributor wines, but you want a really good wine list. How in the hell do you get that now? Unless, unless we get back into the business and right. get out there and start getting in their, in their faces again. And, and I think that should go back into our favor. Do you think it's, it's a really good point you bring up, and it's something that, you know, going back to the East Coast and visiting home and going to different small restaurants, do you think that's also maybe in part the responsibility of, say, the, the restaurateur to kind of go, I'm not just going to build a wine list Absolutely. with a few of these wines on it just so I can have wine at my restaurant. It's up to them to maybe say, hey, I really want to build this wine list. I really want to bring people through here and try out some new things rather than just grabbing a distributor's, you know, book and going, okay, I'll take that, 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 and that, not even really taste anything. And there we go. I wrote my wine list and that's done. I mean, and I think that can be done these days. And I also think you can get a relationship where I, if I had a restaurant on the East coast, I could email you and I could, I, I could get that and I can get in yeah. touch with you. Yeah, it's, uh, and, and if the wine is good and the price is right and I can sell it, it's yeah. great. And you're a nice guy. I mean, that's something else I think that's important these days. You can actually get to know the people behind it. And if somebody's an asshole, you don't need to carry their wine. I mean, you're saying because there's a lot of other good wine hey, out there. It's not yeah, hard. Absolutely right. What about what about doing Skype wine tastings? You send them a sample and you go, uh, you know, you just get these guys plugged in to using. What about the two sweet wine tastings? I mean, that's yeah, yeah. it's not too far off it's from what we're doing idea. right now, yeah. isn't it? I mean, that we're really exactly. we're really sitting down here and you know, I'm, I'm, even I'm bullish on this kind of thing because it, it doesn't pay to fly across the country to sell. 10 cases. Yeah. No. You wake up early, you go see a little retailer. I mean, yeah, it's oh, tough. shit. Mm. It's brutal. I mean, but how cool does the, the, the sommelier yeah, feel, like maybe then, if you can, you know, get a live stream like this going and you can say, okay, we've got this psalm, this psalm, this psalm, this psalm, this psalm, and this, you know, restaurant tour on all these different states, and we're going to sit down and you each have one of, you know, the five wines that I want to taste you through, and we're going to get you on screen right now, and we're going to talk about these wines. 
I mean, that's, you know, that's now we're starting to do some yeah. tech, using technology to really change the industry, you know, and. And it needs to be done. Something like that is the new marketing paradigm, I think. I mean, we just can't spend the money flying around the country with the amount of volume that like Jillian, I mean, cheaper scrapers, what? So, but with, the other day I did a couple of tastings back east, Skype. So I sent them the samples and they were in their kitchen, okay? And then I got on my deal and we did a tasting, just like that, it was, it was cool. Hour, half an hour, 45 minutes, everybody was happy. They got their blends together. I, what, what I was doing, what, working with them was putting some blends, some clients' blends together. And it was almost like I was like right there. So what did it cost you, 50 bucks? Yeah. I mean, sitting in the sample yeah. the next day, <laughs> something it. like that, That's you were it. good. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. Let's go. Cool. Mm -hmm. And it was, it would be the, the one thing, though, that buyers used to just, they treated us like crap, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they really treat you like crap. I mean, you, you fly back there, you want to be in a, in a top restaurant, and you make an appointment, and you show up, and there's six guys in front of you, and crime and he's six, you're, you're, you know, and then you finally you get to him, and well, now, you know, I got to go for a dentist appointment, you know, can you come back tomorrow? Well, I just flew 2,000 miles, uh, and I really, you know, and, well, I don't have the time, but uh, leave, leave some samples for me to try. I used to get this constantly, like, well, shucks, I'm not chopped liver here. I mean, That's bullshit. I, yeah, it really. I, I, I planted the goddamn vineyard. I, you know, I make the wine. I mean, I, I've got millions of dollars involved up, and 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 you know, I'm not worth your time to sit down and have a little tasting with me. It used to bug the hell out of me. So the the paranoia, that really, from a buyer standpoint, maybe maybe it has to be so bad and so desert out there where they're not getting any of us good stuff that they finally start coming around and maybe give us a little bit of TLC. I don't know. Well, what's what's interesting is um, sometimes when you, you get people that get behind your wines that you don't know, like you never met them, they taste it somewhere and then they become the they love first it. advocate. Yeah, they love it. Yeah. But the, the other part is, is they, you know, they tell you, oh, I wish we could meet you guys more often or you could visit or we, we could even just meet the person that make the wine. And I think that solution of Skype is, is a great way. Because if, so. if you're doing your wine list conscientiously, you start to understand the wines, you start to, and then you, the next question is who's behind it? Who's doing what? You know, and, and then you, you have that preferred connection to, to the wines, and that's what we look for. Do they treat you, so like in a Skype tasting, for instance, would they treat you any differently in some ways? And so maybe in public, they may not have the balls to say, this is a little too expensive for me, but online, would they? Necessary. I mean, I'm just saying, would they be more honest? Would I would it be just different? so impressed. It was literally like you and I sitting here looking at me because it was, you know, a 17 inch screen. Yeah. You know, you, and it was so cool because it was their their feedback, you know, their little motions when you, you'd see them taking the sip and na 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 na. It was really, really pretty cool. And, I, and it Did really you send them two me, bottles in case one was corked? Or not? Well, Is that a concern? Well, no, I just don't well, know. I mean, if well, it's... if you had a cork bottle, then you go, you know. Good evening. How are you? What do you uh, think about what we're talking about right now? What's? Uh, do you have any involvement in the industry, by the way? I do not, but I will have full disclosure. Hi, Adam. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. From Texas. Mm. Oh, very cool. <laughs> um. I am a very good friend of Adam and Diana's, and I, I just happened to see that this was happening this evening and logged on. So I'm, uh, well, I am. Thank you very much. I wish more people would log on. I put it on Facebook and Twitter and all of that. So I mean, again, it's how media has changed things. I think that. Thank you for coming on, Rachel. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. No, I, I've been listening since the beginning, and um, I will just say that. You know, I grew up in a family that we always had wine at the table ever since I was little, and I grew up Catholic, so the drinking age was 10, and, um, you know, so, so wine was definitely a part of my life, um, and it, but it wasn't until Diana and I went to college together, so that's how I know Diana and how I've gotten to know Diana and Adam, um, and of course, become very involved in their winery um, throughout the years, and I've actually been at, at tastings with Diana and just have... I've had a great time with them, but 
you know, I think being more involved um, as an as a connoisseur of the wine and really being an advocate of the wine, I take Diana and Adam's cards everywhere with me. I'm never without them. And even at those restaurants where I don't see their wine on a wine list, I'll say, have you heard of this wine? Um, it's a great wine. You know, this is this is one of the best wines. It's one of the best Pinots out there. And I will always um, you know, press their wine when I'm somewhere. I just, I think if more people got involved, just like Adam said, if you really love a wine and more people got involved in a, the love of that wine, um, then, and enjoyed it more, there would be more wine drinkers in this country. And, and that's just how I feel about it. And I, that's, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with everything you guys have said so far. Your check is forthcoming, Rachel. Thank you very much. I appreciate well, it. Well, Rachel, hey, you, I tried you, to get on that trip to Hawaii with Diana, and I was I, you know, couldn't go. So you did. <laughs> well, Rachel, what do you, what do you think then? Do you think that it's this is uh, where social media um, and kind of what we're doing right now isn't just about you know the wineries reaching out and constantly putting things on Twitter, on Facebook, and things like that, but it really comes down to the consumer, people who are not just, oh, yeah, I like that winery, or, oh, yeah, boom, I'm going to follow their Twitter feed, and, but, you know, retweeting, refollowing, really bringing things out there and saying, hey, I drank this wine. If you don't know about it, check it out. I mean, that's Absolutely. what social media really in and of itself It, it is, is and especially with the generation that's coming up now, that is what they're all about. It's social media. Right. They're, they're on Twitter. They're on, you know, I have... Uh, my younger friends that I are involved with, 20-somethings, they are on social media all the time. Um, and, and they actually, they enjoy wine. They, they, are, they have a taste for it. And if you can figure out a way to involve them in that process, they will follow you. They, they just need to be involved. And, and, and again, I think it's that, you know, we've, it, there is that stigma around wine being unattainable for some reason. And it isn't. It's something that's very attainable. It's very affordable. It's something that can be enjoyed by by a cross section of people. And I think the more that that message comes across, the more people are going to to come over to the wine side um, and enjoy it more. So, you know, I, the other part of that is I'm a program manager for the state of Texas, and Texas being a big state, we use social media and and venues like this and go to meetings where we, we have to see people um, on these types of venues because we can't travel across the state as often as we want to because it's a big state. So doing more of interactive um, uh, participations and talks is going to be a great way to help um, advance what you're doing. So I think it's a great, a great thing that you're doing. Well, thank you, Rachel, so much for logging in and, and really showing your support and you realize that people are about food, cheese, wine. Where does your meat come from? Where are your vegetable grown? How's you know how far was that bred or grown? And you have this kind of European way of living mm -hmm. that is totally ingrained in the in the culture, and it's spreading all around the states. And everywhere you go, you have local cheese, local wine, local beers, and people look for that. And I think. For me, the tweeting, the chatting, all that part is just a translation of people just being interested in what they are drinking and making it a normal part of their day routine and day life. And it's it's a complex world, you know, with little different items, and that's a way to to absorb it okay. by exchanging and. But but don't trust. I mean, I think if you can relate it sometimes to what people are are living on their daily life. I mean, we can sit around and argue about high alcohol, low alcohol all day, but compared to Texas barbecue versus Kansas City barbecue versus North Carolina barbecue, our argument's going to be nothing. That's that's fist fight. I mean, they, they get that. <laughs> well, mediums like this have got to be part of our marketing future. I mean, this this kind of thing, the, the, this back and forth, because not everybody can come out and see me. You know, spend a couple as hours. big as an attraction as you are. Yeah, but yeah, yes, I know. I understand. Yeah, we love to have dinner. We want to be there, there though, John. But there, there's only one of me. There is. I need exactly. clones. Thank I need, you. I need, I need wow. lots of clones. Um, but this, you know, this, this is, this is kind of an intriguing way of of bringing 
us into the what? Oh, DJ has a DDA, question. DDA, come on, DJ. I, I have a tweet and a, and a question actually uh, from uh, uh, Joel Morgan from Raleigh, North Carolina, watching this. Joel, nice to meet uh, Thank you. See you again. Thank you. Um, kind of a couple of things. It feels uh, very much the same way as you did, you know, felt traded uh, that way with the trade, you know, like coming up and traveling and, and the form that was, he was a distributor and uh, trying to set up appointments, you know, with the buyers and, uh, and uh, pretty much be treated like, you know, not very nicely. But uh, then his uh, question is, uh, do you, you know, that was a long uh, uh, question, you know, but you know, uh, to resume that, this is like, do you see uh, the life, uh, the live Skype testing more prevalent nowadays? Do you see, do you think this is something that's gonna, you know, it's gonna be, you know, help you guys to 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 promote? Uh, are you willing to go in that route or try explore that route? You know, I would, I, I certainly would, if he's directing it to me, because I, I, it it turned out so easy. Mm -hmm. It was a simple little discussion over a while. Now, you, the only thing you have to do is make sure you've got some samples sent back. And and it turned out to be effortless. It was so cool. When I was finished with the both tastings, I went, shit, this is, this is cool. What does your distributor do the last Friday of every month? They have a sales meeting. I mean, it's just, it's a given. That's pretty yeah, much the last Friday. Of the month, yeah, I mean, yeah. it may differ it's second Friday or whatever, but usually it's around that time. And so it, instead of you always being there for it, if you can say, okay, here are the samples and let me Skype on a big TV in front of all of I mean, if you've got a big distributor, it's a big screen, a smaller one for if you've got five or six people, but you do that and you get in front of them and you talk to them about it. That to me is like, Great, great opportunity and a great way to use the media that it way. It really is. It really is. It, and it's so, it just makes it so easy. It's scarily simple, isn't it? It's so simple. Exactly right. It's yeah. And the technology has embedded, all, all the technology is embedded in every computer. I mean, but my you laptop could, has you, a camera. You could hit three states at least, I mean, on a Friday. I mean, you, you hit it three time zones easy. If you had yeah. it set up, if you had it set up, right? you, are home. Yeah. <laughs> you could go one to another, to another, to another. I mean, my God, you could, what used to cost me three, four thousand bucks, you could, ten thousand bucks, you get her done in one day. Exactly. So, all right. So, here is like, you know, the next thing, like the next question, this is my question. Um, are you ready to invest into that? Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's actually. Cool. Uh, what is it like? You know, are you I, talking about uh, be investing in, on on time or on uh, on uh, uh, monetary? I mean, uh, uh, you know, because it's like tweet, right? You know, you you don't you don't start a, a tweet account and tweet one time. If right. you start to go into video and uh, and reaching out people, you you need to commit to that. Well, and then and then and then you know there is eventually. Some kind of uh, you know uh, money involved into that as far as material and you know what you know and how good of a video you want to create. Well, you don't have to show first. One, you're going to have to convince the distributor. Some, some will buy into it right off, but you're going to get some of them that are are like there's not you're going to get anyway. You're going, yeah. you're going to have to convince some of them. Uh, I think it's yeah, going to be the little guys. But you're going to say yeah. But say, give it a shot. I mean, and I don't but know. I mean, need, that could be but, a way. But DJ, they, they need the platform. To, I mean, the you know the structure that makes it easy. You know, I think I know the platform. <laughs> yeah, what? I found that a lot more relationship building and a lot more wine got sold, depending on how much time I spent with that person after. I was hitting restaurants. Relationships. Yeah, and this is the this is the tight rope that we're walking right now, is that you know, yes, we can get in front of that person. Yes, we can taste their wine, and yes, we can make ourselves accessible to them through Skype and through emails and through Toot Suite, of course. And um, but the big thing is what makes the late night and you going out and having a couple of. Cocktails afterwards or something like that with the big people. Deal. Yeah, which it's very a big deal. It's a natural nice. part of the relationship. Then you 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 know you're from a work environment to a more personal relationship. Right. But the question is, if you have a limited time, would you rather spend more time with the people you don't know and you need to build a relationship to develop, or to just people you know and are doing a good job with your own? Right. 
It is. It's a. You're you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And, and you want to spend a lot of time with the people we don't know to develop those market, or we should be spending time with the people who that already are, know. where everything is fine. Mm-hmm. I guess the question I would have on that is that is that. Um, how much? I mean, I, I largely agree, and I enjoy those evenings out and have a good time. Um, sometimes I have a horrible morning the next morning. <laughs> on occasion, but um, how? Yeah, how? Um, how much have people adjusted, particularly younger folks, to a different relationship with? people. I mean, people now meet people online. You used to meet people at a bar. Now you can meet people online. You can, I mean, is there an adjustment? And I'm not saying it's going to be exactly the same. And I don't think one is going to completely 100% substitute for the other. I don't really necessarily believe that. But if John is able to get relationships with certain uh, salespeople with his distributor or certain retailers, whatever, by doing it online. So then when you then go back to the market and you get to hit let me hit the five people I know and I get to boom, hang boom, out with boom, them, boom, boom. then that, I, I said, I don't think it's a complete substitution one for the other. This is what I do for work. I, I'm, I'm in community engagement for, for my work and relationship building is what I do for a living. Um, and so it's a question that we go around and around with all the time is where do we spend most of our time relationship building because for, for the work that I do, we have we get feedback and sometimes we have we have different areas of folks that that want to that want more of our time because they're upset with something. And so we have to spend more time relationship building with those folks, but we also have to keep our relationships up with these other folks over here. And mm-hmm. so it's always a juggling act. And where do you, you know, you always have balls up in the air about where are you gonna have these relationships? And so you, and I've been I've been doing this work for a long time, and you have to keep and maintain those relationships that you know are going to be important, um, but at the same time you have to create new ones. And so it is. It's where do you use the social media? Where do you use the one-on-one relationships? But you also have to put people out there that you trust are going to maintain those relationships for you. So you have to make those connections with people out in the field that are going to be able to do that for you whether through your own staff, through your distributors, um, through people that you trust that are out there working for you. So I just wanted to throw that out there and, and see if that gives you anything to, to think about as well. It, that gives us a lot yeah. to think about. I mean, and, and that's right on. That's right, right on. Right. And we could, be, we could be talking about this for the rest of the night. Yeah. Really could. We could sit here. We could polish off these two bottles of wine. And, and we well, might do that, but we, so we're, we're we'll not do sure that. yet. But real, real quick, <laughs> but before... we're talking about it and we're doing it at the same time. We are. We're talking about it, we're doing it, we're making it happen. And before we get any further, I just want to make sure that this is kind of a, as a beginning. This is kind of a, of a springboard for the four of us because I get to interview each one of you three next month. And so just real quick, you, you know, when you're going to show up and what you think we might talk about and what wines you think you might bring. I'm going to be here January 28th. Okay. Uh, I am planning on bringing a selection of Pinots from areas. We get Pinot from Oregon all the way down to Santa Barbara. So I thought it would be fun to share kind of a, a trip down the West Coast. But then from a couple of those vineyards, we also get Syrah from the same vineyard. Okay. And so I thought it's kind of this compare and contrast type thing and that you can show how Syrah does in a certain vineyard versus Pinot and then how there's a differences up and down the West Coast. I tend to believe that there's nothing wrong with customers saying, I like your Oregon Pinot, but I don't like your San Lucia Highlands Pinot because the next customer is going to say, I love your San Lucia, but I don't like your Oregon. Right. Um, poorly made is a different thing. So I want to show the range of what we do and get um, – Get your opinion and thoughts on those, and it gives me something different to drink, so that's fun. Cheers, John. How about yourself? Next time I'm here, yeah. Well, I think we got to try uh, some varieties that I'm getting thrilled about. Oh, really? What are you most thrilled about right now, real quick? Well, I mean, it's uh, how about Carmenere? Oh, huh? yes. What the hell? Carmenere? Let's do it. Bring some Carmenere. We'll drink it, or maybe a Tanat. Oh, even better. So now we're talking about Lost Bordeaux varietals. We're talking about South yeah, American, Uruguay. Think about. I love it. I was just drinking Tanat last weekend. A gentleman, um, friend of mine who's a winemaker here in Napa, has two big 500 
leader punchins of Tanat, and it's so great. Like, I'm starting to get pissed off. Can we come for his? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you guys can come out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just going to winery and it's like, yeah, uh-huh. like, um, I think it's uh, January 7. Um, the idea is to approach maybe a couple of flavors of soils. Oh, Mostly okay. Cabernet Sauvignon, but uh, some um, you know places that are not well known in Napa. Okay. And they still make an outstanding wine. So I'll bring some older vintages and then newer stuff. Oh, we're going to have some fun. Yes. I can't wait. And I remember, everybody's always welcome. We want to get as many people either in the studio, logging in from home, really participating in any one of these tastings that we do. Because it's not just about us sitting around this table having this conversation. It's about the full interaction of everybody. It's most of what our conversation tonight kind of became about. And we really want to get everybody involved. So always remember, check us out on our website, tootsuite.com. Follow us on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter. Um, and really, guys, we can't wait to have you back around this table again because it's going to be fun. And you can request sample. We'll mail them before the show. This is true. Yeah. There you go. There We're done. Set. We'll oh, put oh. links to all these wineries' <laughs> websites. To make sure we'll that you can together. send them an email. We can get you samples. This is going to be great. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. Thank you guys so much for participating in our winemaker roundtable. Thank you to 55 Degrees. Gentlemen, cheers. 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 Thank Jump. you very much, John. Mm.